Howdy folks, and welcome back to You Got This. I'm Garrett, and today we're gonna talk about water. Going to the pool, going to the beach, getting in a hot tub. Uh, there's so many ways to handle this with a prosthetic leg. Uh, depends on context. Uh, I've done a bunch of different things. So the simplest thing, if you're at a pool or a hot tub, uh, if I'm in the hot tub, I just take my leg off. Um, you don't need to move around a bunch in a hot tub, so uh, it's easier just to take it off uh, and put it back on when you get out. Now, living in the mountains, uh, it gets cold here, and getting out of the hot tub, uh, drying your leg off, putting your leg, or drying your limb off, putting your leg on, uh, it's cold for a bit. Uh, so that's less than ideal. But um, from what I've found, that's just the easiest way to do it. It's the most comfortable and uh, you don't really miss out on anything. Going to the pool, it kind of depends. Sometimes I'll take my leg off um, if it's gonna be more of a casual day at the pool. Uh, if I'm gonna be playing around with the kids and doing stuff, I'll leave it on. Uh, the beach, definitely need it on. It's just too much trouble um, to get in and out of the water and move around and the waves and, and all of that. So there's a bunch of options. And what I want to do today is really dive into kind of the nuances and the subtlety and uh, pros and cons of these different approaches and what you might want to think about. So the first thing is the best possible solution. If you're going to be, say you're going on a beach vacation, you're going to be in the water a bunch. Um, you ideally want to have a backup leg, um, not just because um, it's good to have a backup, in case something goes wrong with your primary, um, but because when a leg gets wet, you, you know, especially if you're at the ocean, uh, you wanna rinse it with fresh water uh, afterwards, and you're gonna lay it out to dry. Uh, you, it, sand it will get everywhere, um, and the salt water's corrosive. Uh, you definitely want to be able to take your leg apart and leave it and use a different leg while that leg's drying. Um, and so, there's a bunch of options here. Uh, depending on how you get your socket made, um, your prosthetist will often make you a check socket or a test socket. Uh, they're generally less durable uh, than your primary socket, uh, but uh, your prosthetist can usually make them good enough um, that they could get by for like a casual day at the pool. The ocean might get a little tougher because they're not that durable. Um, but you can talk to your prosthetist and uh, figure something out because usually there's kind of a leftover socket after you get your, your real socket. Um, the other option, and this is what I've done more recently, um, is you can actually, insurance won't pay for an extra socket, but when you go and you are getting a new leg um, and insurance is covering it, you can usually ask your prosthetist uh, about paying cash for them to make a duplicate socket. Right, so once they've gone through all the trouble of making the socket, it's much lower effort for them to just make a copy of it. Uh, in my case, I wanna say it was like three or $400 um, for the extra socket. Now, early on, you probably don't wanna do that because your leg is gonna shrink and change sizes so quickly, you're not gonna, the socket's not gonna last long. Um, the fit's not gonna be great. But the upside is because you're getting new sockets every six months or so, that first year, year and a half, you're gonna have some extra older sockets. Now, they're not gonna fit quite as well as your primary socket, but for things like the pool and the beach, it'll usually fit well enough to get you by so that you can use your old sockets um, and just add more socks um, to fill out the extra space and still get some use out of those old sockets. Uh, so that's an option as well. <clears throat> and of course, you can in some cases use your socket, but you wanna be really aware of how that would affect your foot's warranty because most feet uh, are not warrantied for the water. Uh, the, the ones that are are very explicitly labeled as waterproof. Um, in the case of my foot that I use for more like things where I know um, it can take and get beat up and all that, um, the year after I got it, they made it waterproof. Um, so mine wasn't technically waterproof, but uh, because the new ones are, and I'm sure it's close enough. Um, and it's luckily not my primary one, so it works. Um, so there's a lot to it, right? It looks simple enough. 
But when you're in the water, and it depends on the type of system you have. Um, in the case of most of my, I have yet to use my newer one in the water. I don't think I will, um, just because it's a more complicated leg. But you're wearing socks down in here, and you got your liner, water gets in there. This whole setup, um, you know, unless you're like a really casual day at the pool, everything is gonna be soaking wet. Um, so you're gonna get home um, after say, you know, at the beach or the pool or whatever, and you're gonna wanna let take it all apart and lay it out to dry. All of it. That means taking the sleeve off and in my case, rolling this down, pulling the inner socket out. Now we're down to this. Even all these little things, it'll get in there somehow. I don't know how it does it, uh, but it does. So I will generally I'll take my socket off and this is hollow, right? So it gets in there. It's just, it gets everywhere. So now you're down to your foot and you think you're good, right? Nope. This thing will be so full of water and sand and this sock needs to dry. You got to take it apart. And this is tedious. It gets easier with time and shoehorns. So you'll take your foot shell off and hopefully um, one of the other things that's key is to either have an extra foot shell um, that you drill holes in or just drill holes in your foot shell so the water can drain out um, while you're using it uh, and they just they come in handy uh, it usually doesn't drain enough of the water out and the sand will accumulate and but it helps so you want to take your foot shell off you want to take the sock off of your foot and not much else you can do with the foot. Um, and you quite literally, um, in an ideal world, you don't have to do this, but if you wanna take care of your leg and you want it to last, um, you kinda of have to take everything apart and let it air out. And then you, the next day, to go back to the beach, you know, if you're on vacation, whatever, or if you live at the beach, um, you gotta put it all back together. So, you know, maybe if you live at the beach, you, you get a foot that you truly just don't mind beating up, um, that you know it can handle it and you're not worried if it starts to rust or any of that. Um, which, speaking of rust, every foot and leg part I have ever seen, all of the screws and the set screws that come with it, they, I don't know why, I'm sure there's a reason, they are not stainless steel. So, they corrode very easily. Um, and you can find a place that, that specializes in like nuts and bolts and screws and buy yourself, they're not too expensive, a bunch of stainless versions and replace all your parts, uh, which is what I did. But I don't think I would have done that if my dad just happens to be in that industry. Um, and so I mentioned it to him and he said, yeah, that's easy to do. So. Um, you know, you can find stainless parts. Uh, so I've swapped every screw on all of my stuff with stainless parts. Uh, and again, we mentioned this in the last episode, when you put it back together, you want to use Loctite and your torque wrench. Um, one time um, earlier this year, we uh, were at the beach and I just gotten so worn out of like doing it right every day. Uh, one day I cut some corners and just threw my leg together and rushed out the door. And uh, I ended up struggling to walk on the beach because my foot was starting to fall off and uh, I had to get all the way back to the car without barely being able to lift my leg because if I did, 
it'd keep wiggling loose. By the time I got to the car, it was almost ready to fall off. Um, you know, so take the time to do it right and use this stuff. Um, when you do take your leg apart in this, like we discussed last episode, as long as you only loosen two screws and then tighten those back, uh, your leg will be aligned the way you had it before and you'll be all set. Um, what else do we got? I think that's really it. Um, like I said, it's a lot about drying parts. You wanna rinse all this with fresh water um, to clean off that, uh, all the, the either chlorine or uh, the salt water, uh, and that'll play a huge part in helping prevent corrosion. Um, if you do notice uh, some of your screws or anything starting to rust or corrode a little bit, uh, you can put a little bit of WD-40 on there and uh, wipe it off and clean it off real good and that'll help um, give it a little more longevity. But usually these feet, they're pretty darn durable. Um, you know, you, you would definitely shorten the life by using it in the ocean, uh, salt water, that kind of thing. But uh, more often than not, it'll be able to take it. And, you know, the way I see it, I, I want to go to the beach. I want to do these things. Um, I want to have fun. And as long as you've got an extra foot or socket or, you know, however it plays out that, you know, everybody's different as you move on and progress through your leg changing after amputation, um, you end up with spare parts. You end up with spare sockets. Um, you can usually make something work. And if you can't, your prosthetist can usually help you uh, with a check socket or something like that. Uh, one other thing uh, that is worth mentioning, I don't know if there's anything you can do about it, Walking on the beach, um, especially like loose sand in a prosthetic leg is rough uh, because normally your ankle will adjust to the sand and uh, how unlevel it is, but with a prosthetic foot, because you don't have an ankle, the ankle doesn't really give or flex. Uh, that transfers up to your knee and your hip and it can be painful and uncomfortable walking on loose sand. And so, you know, you go to the beach, uh, I definitely uh, try to gravitate towards more packed sand um, and that's helped. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, get out there, have fun, uh, make the most of it. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a little more inconvenient, but it still works and you can still get it done. So that's all we got for today. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. You got this.